Hey guys, what's up? It's Andrew here. Welcome back to the MLS Review, Episode 2. To start things off this week, we're going to San Jose versus Houston. San Jose, what are you doing? San Jose lose 2-1 to Houston? What? After an impressive performance versus Vancouver last week, they come out and absolutely flop against Houston, a team that has nothing to play for. At home, San Jose hasn't had back-to-back -back wins since the first week of the season. They're sitting in seventh place right now, and if they want to make that playoff push, they need to start getting in the good form. Now on to NYC versus LA. And we can talk all day about how offside Theo was, and he was offside, it's proven. But that missed call canceled out the PK they should have had before, so it's irrelevant. However, what's more important right now is how unmotivated LA looked. You can blame it on the travel time, you can blame it on the small field, but they had no urgency to push forward lately. Everything was played straight to Jared's feet and then tried playing over the top to Robbie Keane. That's not going to work, especially on a small field with two of the best heading defenders in the league. They never worked through the middle, though Santos was basically useless on the wing. <laughs> and their most dangerous attacker was Yelly Van Damme, their center back. LA are clearly in a good position right now and don't have anything to worry about with the playoff race, but they better hope that doesn't happen during the playoffs this year. To Montreal versus Chicago now, where Chicago finally broke their away winless streak. For the first time since 2014, they won a game on the road. And they did it in a very decisive fashion at Montreal. The signings they brought in during this window, Solnyak, Dilu, Gusen, all those types of guys, are all looking like they're about to pay off for this team. They look like they're adapting well and they're helping Chicago pick up some points. With Sean Johnson keeping his really good form, this is a good sign for Chicago. This season is basically done for them, but for the next season and future seasons to come, this is looking at a good sign for them. As for Montreal, they have a little bit of a cushion in the Eastern playoff race, but they have to start limiting these bad losses if they want to keep it comfortable and if they want to do well in the playoffs this year. To New England versus Columbus now. New England dropped the points to Columbus, and it's coming off of another poor defensive effort. The first goal that they scored, nobody marks a man on the back post. The second, somebody tackles Gonzalez in the back, they go on and counter and score a goal. With Columbus's poor form this season, this, this was a good chance for New England to get in that last playoff spot but really poor defensive mistakes lead to them dropping points again. That's their fourth loss in as many games, and if they don't turn around soon, they can say goodbye to the playoffs. Colorado, Orlando now. And we might as well not even talk about this anymore. Orlando gets another tie. We can go on and on about this, but it's just gonna be the same old speech. However, we can take some positives for Orlando. Their defense held the second place team in the West to zero goals. That's a good thing. And Breck Shea out on the wing looked very dangerous, creating a few opportunities and get, getting some shots off for himself. However, with a really tough schedule to end the season coming up, they need to get this stuff firing on all cylinders now, or they can say goodbye to the playoffs. RSL versus FC Dallas now. RSL takes three points here, one nothing, off of an absolutely stunning finish for Hami Olave. Where was that with the Red Bulls, Hami? This one had a lot of great goalkeeping on both sides, but Nick Romano edges him out and getting his clean sheet. And this brings us back to a talking point about FC Dallas. These guys go on streaks. They can either be the best team in the league or the worst team in the league. Come playoff time, it's going to depend on what street they're on to see how they're going to do. Right now, they're in the latter part of that conversation. They're in really bad form right now. They're constantly being put on the defensive and having to react to games rather than being proactive and creating chances for themselves. To Philly versus Toronto now. Philly lose 3-1 to a very impressive Toronto team, and the only question is, can anybody stop Giovinco right now? In the beginning of the season, you could say maybe, but now with Josie Altidore in form playing off of him, the answer is definitely not. Just too smart for defenders in this league to keep up with. His runs are too advanced for any center back to follow, and he just makes them look silly at this point. Josie and Jay Vingo can easily be one of the best pairings in the playoffs this year. Next to BWP in question, Via and Lampard, and if they make it, which I think they will, Dempsey, Lodiero, and Morris. Regardless, it's going to be a fun playoff series to watch if all these players are doing well. To SKC versus Vancouver now. SKC took the points against Vancouver, who continues to disappoint this. More defensive mistakes for Vancouver, as they left the goal scorer unmarked in their six-yard box off the seventh. The second of goal to PK, which had a lot of controversy around it, with Ousted, with the referee calling Ousted on And let me just say, being a goalkeeper myself, that call was ridiculous. I've seen goalkeepers get away with so much more than what Ousted did, and still make the same. That call should never have been but anyways, yeah, it's still a bad loss for Vancouver, but now it's only two points in the last six games. To Seattle versus Portland, a great derby game that had everything. Hard tackle, wide open play, goals, and just pure hatred for Portland. 
Disappointing people keep up from the Seattle Sounders, but their game played made up. This was a huge game for Seattle. They got within two points of the playoff spot now with eight games remaining. Where if they had lost, it would be eight points. Dempsey stepped up as he's expected to do as a big name DP, and Stephen Fry also made a few really good saves. But fourthly, it's beyond me why you don't start your best goal scorer on your team in a derby game on the road. Why don't you start the Nando I don't understand. But they've now lost their four of the last five games and are slowly losing their grip on the last playoff spot. They need to find some form ASAP, or they won't be playing for the MLS Cup this season. But watch out for Seattle. Because when they get in the playoffs, and they will, they're going to be a very hard team to start. Now, disappointingly, I need to talk about the Red Bulls. It's the same old story. Go on the road, go up 2 0, 75 minutes left. It's like they're bored of winning and they let everybody come back. Two goals in three minutes they left. The penalty was clear, and then all of a sudden they just shut down and they let another header go. It's just terrible. I don't, I can't understand what's going through Jesse Marsh's mind when he says we're not worried about losing these leads in the playoffs because it all balance out. That doesn't make sense. And how does he use subs until the 75th and 94th meeting? Like, that's just absurd. On the road against your rivals, this tie feels like a loss and it's a bad loss. They need to clean up their act and there's going to be another early game for the playoffs this year. But anyways guys, that's it for this week's episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time. But until then, be good.